Hello again everyone and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera where today I'm going to be describing the rarest Pentax camera. Uh, I would say the rarest Pentax SLR camera but in this case today I'm going to be talking about the rarest of all the Pentax cameras <clears throat> and that is of course the Pentax AP or Asahi Pentax of 1957. Uh, the Pentax AP or Asahi Pentax has the distinction of being the, fir the first SLR camera produced by uh, Pentax and one of the first SLR cameras ever produced by any company. This was, uh, I guess, an evolution of the original Asahi Flex camera, which was quite popular uh, in many places in the 1950s, which had a similar design from, from about this part downward, and it featured a pop-up focusing hood, kind of like what you find on an SLR camera with a magnifying glass on it, and also a, a finder which you would look through uh, on the back, kind of an interesting system. You could focus through the top and compose your image looking through the viewfinder. Uh, a kind of a quirky camera, uh, but uh, still a, quite a popular seller. It was a 35mm camera which featured interchangeable lenses, and there was, Pentax sold a lot of them. But Pentax decided that they wanted to produce a modern SLR camera, and so they adapted a pentaprism system for, op for focusing the camera, and they renamed this uh, particular model instead of the Asahi Flex, they called it the Pentax, for the pentaprism. And the Pentax name was so uh, interesting to uh, the Asahi Optical Company that after this camera was produced, they changed the name of the company to Pentax. So that gives this camera a lot of uh, historical significance uh, in photography and of course the Pentax uh, company itself. Uh, th these cameras came with a couple of lenses. They didn't r have a, a large variety of uh, lenses until uh, uh, the K and later models were produced. Uh, the standard lenses which came on these cameras were either the 58mm f2 lens, which this camera is fitted with, or an f2.2 lens. So not a lot of difference between the two lenses. Uh, these lenses are really highly sought, uh, sought after by collectors. Uh, Pentax didn't produce a whole lot of them uh, before the cameras were replaced by the, the K and later cameras which featured uh, the uh, automatic diaphragm operation. These cameras were highly renowned for the quality of the, not the camera, the lenses I should say, were highly renowned for the quality of the images which they were able to produce. And uh, the, the lenses tend to be more popular than the cameras themselves. The old Asahi Pentax is a little bit of a finicky camera and the shutter is kind of weak and tends to break uh, quite quickly or easily. It's hard to find one of these old cameras with a working shutter. The shutter in this camera doesn't work, unfortunately. Uh, but it's an M42 mount lens and of course can be used on later model Pentax cameras as well as pretty much any other camera which features the M42 mount. Uh, production figures on these cameras vary. Uh, the, the numbers are anywhere from 13,000 to nearly 20,000 depending on uh, who you quote or where you get the information from. And that doesn't make it an especially rare camera. And for myself, the silver version is not the rarest Pentax uh, uh, camera. It would have to be the black paint version uh, which uh, Pentax produced. They produced this uh, identical camera in a black paint finish and also with an all black lens where all the chrome parts were uh, painted black. And those uh, cameras are extremely rare and luckily I just happen to have one right here. Uh, this is only the third example which I've ever seen and uh, <clears throat> as you can see it's, it's, it's seen better days but it's still intact and personally I think this is a really attractive camera uh, for all the, the brassing and wear which it has on it. Uh, these cameras, the black version, is just uh, almost impossibly rare. They're really, really hard to come by. Uh, this is the, the third one, as I said, which I've seen. And um, this isn't the best example in terms of the, the finish. It's been used a lot. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's really, I think, a wonderful looking camera. When I come across these old cameras, the black paint ones, <clears throat> I actually prefer ones which have been used a lot uh, rather than the ones which are, are like new and don't have any marks on them. And that's mainly because uh, I, I like to use cameras. I like to go out and take photographs with them. And some cameras, uh, uh, the rare ones, are just too nice to use. And uh, anywhere that which you uh, subject them to can greatly reduce their value. Uh, I, I met a, a guy, uh, he's really f familiar in the rangefinder photography world, Tom Abramson. I met him in Tokyo uh, several years ago when I was getting uh, a rapid winder for my uh, old M4. And uh, 
He was talking about a friend of his who was a doctor who had an original black paint Leica M3 which was still brand new in the box and he didn't want to open the box because it would seriously affect the value of the camera. And from time to time he would x-ray the box just to get a look at the camera on the inside and that was the only way which he could actually see what he had. And I don't like to have a, such a wonderful piece of machinery uh, locked up in it and wrapped in plastic in a box where I can never actually use it. Uh, I, I like mechanical things. I like to use them and handle them. And one like this, which has been used a lot, of course, I'm not going to be afraid to go out and use it myself. So I, I find a lot more pleasure in a camera like this when, than something which is nice and brand new and shiny and doesn't have any marks on it. So, a lot of you are probably uh, curious to know about the features and controls and how to use one of these cameras, how it works. Uh, there, there's always a possibility that someone out there has one of these old Pentax cameras and or has come across one and wants to know how to use it. So let's go ahead and take a look and see. So I'll go ahead and start on the top as I usually do and I'll go ahead and start with this rewind lever which is the, the very typical Pentax uh, design rewind lever. The features on this camera for the on the Asahi Pentax were of course carried on into the later cameras like the uh, Pentax K and all the way up uh, all the M42 mount cameras going through the 60s and up to the early 70s. And you know, you'll see a lot of the the features carried over like the design of the wind lever you can see in like like the Pentax 67 and a lot of other stuff including the overall design itself. Uh, this is the rewind lever. It has an R on it for those people who don't understand. It's a rewind lever. We have an arrow telling you which way to turn it. It has this convenient pop-out lever with a roller tip. Uh, you can pull it up when you're putting the film inside the camera, but it uh, doesn't open the film door. To open the film door, you have to pull up on this lever here where my finger is pointing. Push it back down when the film is loaded. Underneath the rewind lever, we have this dial here which you use to set the film speed. Uh, this is a reminder dial. It's not a mechanical dial or affects the operation of the camera in any way. If you're using 200 speed or 400 speed, you would set this dial to 200 or 400. And that way, if you put down the camera or misplace it for a few months or whatever, and you forget what kind of film you have loaded in it, you can simply look at the dial and it will let you know. A uh, very convenient feature and uh, quite important in the days when they were starting to get more kinds of film on the market. At one time, pretty much all you could get was like 100 speed film, and then by uh, the 60s, 70s, and 80s, a huge variety of films were available, and it became more and more important to know what kind of film you had in the camera. Anyway, moving on here to the Penta Prism. This is a plain prism camera. Uh, these cameras didn't come with a built-in shoe for mounting a flash. You could attach a shoe with an accessory shoe adapter, which would slide on to the eyepiece. Uh, this black paint version, uh, at least this one here, has dovetails on either side which allow you to put the shoe adapter on. Uh, this isn't a common feature in the Asahi Pentax cameras and not all of them came with this feature. Uh, this other camera which I have here does not have the dovetails so you cannot attach the accessory eye cups or flash adapter to the camera. Uh, moving over we have the shutter speed dial, and this is, a, as I said, an, an older design camera which still carries a lot of the, the control features which came on old uh, rangefinder cameras, including the old double dial system, which uh, was uh, uh, invented or, I guess, most widely used by the Leica company. Uh, there was a dial on top for the, the standard speeds, uh, say from 1 30th of a second up to 1 500th of a second, and then the slower speed dial was located on the front. And so uh, for the regular speed, you just turn, you lift up the dial and turn it to the shutter speed you would like to use and uh, go ahead and take your photograph. When you're using the slower speeds, you have to set it to uh, the orange number here and then you have to use the dial on the front. And this is a little bit difficult for people nowadays, uh, some of them to figure out, but back in the 1950s, pretty much anyone who was into photography knew how to work this system. Uh, here we have the, the film winding and uh, shutter charging lever. And this is the odd kind of thing. It's kind of a, it's not brightly chrome plated like on the, of course, the chrome camera. It was originally a dark anodized gray color. This one has a nice patina to it from having been used. Yeah, this is definitely a user camera. On top of the uh, winding lever, we have the film counter dial. And this kind of the old style dial with the mechanical reset. You have to turn it to set it to zero after you load the film. Uh, it, it's a simple, 
similar system to the old rangefinder cameras. Very easy to use. It is possible to uh, knock it the wrong way if you aren't careful, but it, it's, it's not all that easy. It's a simple, effective system. It's quite reliable. And Pentax used a similar system, but with an automatic uh, reset system on the later cameras, and they put like a cover over the top with a window on it. But uh, a lot of the mechanical features in this camera were of course carried on to the later Pentax cameras. Uh, on the bottom here we have a standard quarter inch tripod socket and here we have the release button to release the winding mechanism so you can rewind the film. Uh, on the front of the camera we don't have a lot in the way of the controls. We have the slow speed shutter dial here and of course we have the uh, flash sync sockets. You can use a modern flash on this camera quite easily. Just plug it into uh, the sockets on the front. Uh, you can use the flash adapter on this camera. You can find these uh, for sale uh, on, on the internet. Uh, two versions were available. There was a chrome version and a black version. Obviously the chrome version is uh, easier to find and less expensive. Uh, the lens itself, as I said, is an M42 mount manual focus lens, but this is a preset lens. And in order to use this lens, what you would do is you would set the aperture uh, with the front dial here to the aperture setting you would like. And then there's a second dial here which you turn to uh, open uh, the shutter. And you turn this dial to open, or excuse me, open the aperture so you can focus more easily. When the lens is stopped down and the aperture is closed, less light goes through the viewfinder and it's harder to focus. And it also uh, increases the depth of field and that also makes it hard to focus. So in order to focus one of these cameras properly, you have to open the aperture all the way. Now, later cameras feature um, an automatic uh, aperture system, and as I, I've said a few times, this is a full manual system. So when you are taking a photograph, you first have to uh, open the aperture to focus, and then before you take the shot, you stop down the aperture by turning the second ring until it stops. It's a quite a simple system, and though it's kind of confusing or difficult to people nowadays to understand, back in the 1950s, this was a kind of a technological advancement. So, uh, a little bit quirky, but uh, it, it works, and it works without adding a lot of uh, expensive and complicated uh, mechanism inside the lens body. And it also makes for a nice, compact, small lens. There isn't much else to describe uh, about this camera other than loading the film. Uh, to load the film, you pull up on the chrome lever here and flip open the door. Uh, this camera here, I don't know if you can see in the photo, the shutter curtains are really hard and wrinkled in it. Uh, they're so hard, in fact, that the shutter in this camera won't wind or fire, so I have to replace the shutter curtains in it. Uh, it's not an especially easy job. It's not one which I really like to do, to take the camera apart and replace these, but it's common. The shutter curtains used in these cameras uh, uh, has a, a rubber coating on it which turns hard over time and uh, it, as if that wasn't enough of an issue, the ribbons which pull the curtains one way or the other, those also tend to get dry, rotted, and break. So if you've got one of these old cameras and the shutter is still working uh, well, uh, you're, you're very lucky. For most of these cameras, it, it's just simply not going to work. Anyway. Uh, to load the film, you put, pop open uh, the rewind dial like so, you drop your film uh, cartridge here, you close this back downward to hold the film cartridge in place, pull your film meter across and feed it into the slot on the take-up spool, and then simply wind and fire the shutter until it pulls the film across, and the teeth here on the top and bottom are engaged in the holes on either side of the film. It's very important that the, the film lines up with these teeth, otherwise it's not going to wind and you're not going to get any pictures on your film. Once that's set, close the film door. Make sure to push the lever down manually. It doesn't do it automatically like on later model cameras. And then simply wind and fire the shutter until, uh, uh, usually two or three times, on these cameras. This doesn't have like a, a start system like uh, other cameras do. And then reset the winder so the number zero is lined up with the mark here on the top and the camera is ready to shoot. Anyway, uh, that's it for my review of the rarest Pentax camera, which this uh, certainly is. Uh, uh, I plan to be making more videos about more interesting cameras in the future, so if you'd like to see these, uh, please subscribe. I'm always trying to get more people interested in uh, vintage cameras and film photography, and if you click the like button, uh, that really helps. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you tune in again soon.